بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الأولين إلى أبد الأبدين One of the most important practices that our religion calls us to practice and engage in is a practice of reconciliation. The nature of mankind is that one day they will fall out with their family members or there must be an occasion where you will fall out with your friend, you will fall out with your neighbor or you will fall out with a member of your community or society because each person thinks in a different way, lives in a different way, has their own appetite, has their own interests and wants and desires. Maybe something that I like, you might not like. Maybe the way I dress does not like or does not suit the way you like to dress. Maybe you do not want to join me in watching a specific film or you do not like to eat a specific piece of food. Nature is made like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mankind with different tastes, with different needs, with different wants. So it must be that one day you will fall out as a result of your interests and your needs and your desires. And this mostly occurs in families, with friends. Sometimes it occurs with a wife and a husband, where they will fall out. You may see them living side by side, day by day. As day goes on, they live together. They sleep and they wake up and they eat and they drink and they go out and they come and they work and they join they themselves with their daily practices but there must be a day that they give in as a result of problems as a result of tiredness as a result of fatigue it is the responsibility of the other family members or the responsibility of friends and the, and the community to step in to reconcile between these two individuals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran gives us many examples where the prophets and messengers, they played the role of reconciliation between members of the community. Ahlul Bayt alayhum as specifically Amir al-Mu'mineen, Fatima al-Zahra and Hassan and Hussein, they played many roles and many parts in reconciliation between members of the communities that lived at their time. At the time of Ma'mun al-Abbasi, there was one poet who was well known to be amongst those who attended the court of Ma'mun al-Abbasi by the name of Ali ibn Jahan. Ali ibn Jahan, one day, he crossed Ma'mun. Ma'mun became very upset and he ordered his advisors and his ministers to kill Ali ibn Jahan, the poet. Abdullah, one of the ministers of Ma'mun al-Abbasi, came to play the role of reconciliation to Ma'mun between Ma'mun and Ali ibn Jahan. This Abdullah, one of the ministers, came and told Ma'mun, O oh, Ma'mun, you have ordered us to behead Ali ibn Jahan, and you have ordered us to confiscate his wealth. If we do, do go and kill Ali ibn Jahan, we cannot confiscate his wealth, because after his death, his wealth will have to go to his inheritors. And it will be the wealth of the inheritors that we are taking away. And this is not good for someone like you. Ma'mun then ordered Ali ibn Jahan to be sent to prison. So Ali ibn Jahan was sent to prison for a, a while. Then these ministers came and spoke to Ma'mun and said, Oh Ma'mun, Ali ibn Jahan is still in prison. After a while, Ma'mun had calmed down and had rethought about the consequences of Ali ibn Jahan. He ordered them to leave and, re and release Ali ibn Jahan. The role of reconciliation is very important because at times it may save a relationship. At times it may save a, a friendship that had lasted for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes those individuals who reconciliate between two individuals and join them together. Let's be one of those who play that part 
and reconciliate between two individuals, be it a father and their son, a mother and their son or daughter, or a husband and wife, or two friends who have been friends for many years. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to work in that path. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.